Hello, welcome to the Overthinker Podcast. Uh, this is going to be a really interesting year to see what happens with the Saints losing their head coach. Um, I really don't know if I would bet on the Saints this year. Um, I do actually like Jameis Winston, oddly enough. I think Jameis Winston is much better than than he is rated by the average maybe football analyst. I would certainly put Jameis Winston near the top 15 quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, and if we were talking just on talent, he's probably like still top five or six. If you want to talk about arm strength, the ability to evade rushers, um, and just straight up accuracy, when he sees something open, he's going to hit it. The problem with him is has been consistently just reading the defense um, and throwing things when they're just not open, you know, trying to fit the ball into a closing window that in the NFL is just sometimes it's smarter just to throw the ball away or take the sack. But I've always said, and, you know, some people who watch a lot of football have always said, if you could make James Winston just a little more conservative but still get some of those high-end throws, he could be a very good quarterback. Um, and this will be a good test of that, maybe. You know, they do have quite a bit of weapons on that offense. And yeah, I I honestly think without Sean Payton, this is going to be a much different team. It's probably not going to be quite as hard nosed, run the football, um, play great defense. And um, in the first couple of years, it might not look as good. And I'm not really expecting to be as competitive the saints were typically a team throughout the past few years that you could just add a couple wins based on coaching and i don't know if that's going to be the case anymore we'll just have to see honestly i'm kind of somebody that you know i do think coaching still matters in the nfl even though you have incredibly talented players and a lot of teams you still have teams like the ravens and the steelers that are going to win more games than they're supposed to because they have smart coaches on the sideline that know how to game manage and know how to just know how to win football games at the highest level and they have done it for a long time and Sean Payton is just one of those guys like how did they beat the Buccaneers in the last couple years it's not because they have this incredibly talented explosive roster it's because they have a mastermind calling plays on defense that's really frustrating Tom Brady and their offense is practically doing nothing but they still beat this they still beat the Buccaneers and yeah I don't I don't exactly expect to see that again um I think betting on the Falcons here might be smart um they are the team that was kind of feisty last year um and they did get a lot better in the draft and I think leaning into Kyle Pitts and Marcus Mariota running around a little bit making some plays could make this team interesting to watch um, and this is a game, yeah, I would probably bet on the Falcons to at least cover five and a half. That is a lot of points for a team that just changed the head coach. Now the Niners at Bears. This is a pretty interesting game. There are a lot of people betting on the Niners to probably blow out the Bears. And that could be the case. Uh, the Niners have a pretty good defense. It's going to be really hard for Justin Fields to do just about anything. They really are a team that is uh, struggling on the offensive line. They didn't really do... A whole ton in the draft um they didn't really do much i mean i felt like they should have drafted quite a few playmakers on offense probably or offense alignment they didn't really do i don't really feel like they've done enough they are definitely a team that should have attract attacked the draft trying to get justin fields as much help on offense as possible and i don't really think they did that now they still have darnell mooney who's a really really good receiver um and they really, uh, you know, they don't really have anything else proven on that offense right now as far as a receiving option. So, yeah, that is kind of frustrating as somebody who's a fan of Justin Fields. I want to see him succeed, but I don't know if that's going to happen this year. And certainly probably not week one against the 49ers. I definitely expect the Niners to win. Seven points is a lot, but I do think the Niners are a much better roster. Uh, I think they have the better head coach. It's really just going to be, is Trey Lance going to make a bunch of dumb mistakes? I don't really think so. I think they're going to run the ball a lot. And Trey Lance is probably going to throw the ball 10 to 15 times. Uh, a lot of option stuff. And uh, yeah, that's probably going to be the game plan.
15 to 20, probably maybe 10 to 20 passes, a lot of play action, uh, and a lot of option plays, basically. He's probably either going to throw the ball if it's wide open or just take off. Yeah, so I would probably bet on the Niners to cover in this game, and I think um, that's probably a pretty smart bet. Just based on what the Bears did this offseason, I definitely would expect them to look a lot like last year, honestly. Hopefully the offense is better, but I wouldn't. I would have put my money on that. Then we got Steelers at Bengals. Uh, you know, Bengals coming off of that Super Bowl loss where, man, they looked like a really good team in the playoffs. They're a lot of fun to watch. They got so many offensive weapons. Um, and I felt like they got better in the offseason. They definitely improved that offensive line. And hopefully with the auditions on the offensive line, Joe Burrow won't be running for his life as much. Even though he looked pretty good running for his life and throwing the ball at Jamar Chase, that's not going to work on every play. It did work quite a bit, especially in the playoffs. But um, it's not really a formula that will uh, add up to winning games consistently in the NFL over a long term because eventually you're going to take more hits. And yeah, that's just not something I would want my quarterback to have to go through each and every game, each and every season. You want to protect that person so that they can play longer, you know, and return a lot of value to your franchise, especially... Damn. Uh, especially when he's on that rookie contract because it's not going to last much longer. So while he's on this rookie contract, you definitely want to load the roster as much as possible and give him as much help as possible. Um, and hopefully, you know, hopefully they'll get back in the playoffs and make some noise. I expect him to probably make the playoffs. Um, and I do expect him to probably win this game versus the Steelers, but I do think the Steelers recover. Six and a half points is a lot. And the Steelers, it looks like the Steelers are going to be playing Mitchell Trubisky. And, uh, yeah, I guess Mitchell Trubisky looked pretty good in the preseason. He is a guy who can kind of run. Actually, he can run, like, a lot. He's, he's pretty fast for an NFL quarterback. He's still probably one of the five best fastest quarterbacks if you had him in the open field he would he would take off and there's not a lot of defense alignment especially that could catch him but yeah the Steelers have a pretty good roster lots of wide receivers you got Najee Harris um and uh yeah Najee Harris is a guy you definitely want in fantasy this year totally uh but yeah I totally probably would bet on the Steelers to cover this game but still thinking the Bengals will win uh, 44 points seems about right to me. I wouldn't touch the over on that. Now for the Eagles coming to town to play Detroit. Uh, four points favored versus the Lions. This is an interesting one. Uh, I think 48 points is a lot. I totally would bet the under on that. And it's pretty hard for me as a Lions fan to really discern if they're going to be a good team this year or not. I think... They probably won't be horrible, but it's hard for me to expect them to be anything close to a playoff team. So I do expect them to be okay, probably win like eight games or so. And yeah, a lot of that has to do with Jared Goff and this roster. I mean, Jared Goff has been a guy who has gone to the Super Bowl, but that was on a completely loaded roster. And that's not what the Lions are right now. I mean, the Lions do have some offensive weapons but they don't really have i think enough proven wide receivers um and they do have a really good offensive line so if they lean into running the ball i think that could work but i thought that last year and there were games where they were running the ball really well and they had a lead on some good teams and then they stopped running the ball for some reason and I do not think the Lions are a team that should run a traditional offense like a lot of teams because they have such a good offensive line. They can really get four to five yards to carry if they consistently stick to it, I think. And that's not a winning formula for most NFL teams. But the Lions are not really built like most NFL teams. They have a great offensive line. And you really only have one receiver that I can say is pretty good in Amonra St. Brown. Now you got DJ Chark who when he's healthy, he can be kind of a big deep threat. Um, he's very fast and I expect him to make some plays when healthy. 
But he is a guy who hasn't played a whole lot of games. But he's when he's been on the field, he's actually been pretty good for Jacksonville. So, yeah, I would definitely think that the Lions could win more games if they run the ball a lot, do a lot of play action, uh, a lot of, like, tight end screen kind of plays, try to get the ball to Hawkinson on these end arounds and different ways you can get the ball in his hands. That's going to be smart uh, to take pressure off Jared Goff. Uh, because Hawkinson really is the second best receiver on this team. And then you got DeAndre Swift, who's a pretty good receiving back. Um, and also showed some toughness last year um, and some ability to run through the tackles. And uh, I think that's going to be the winning formula for this team. And then you got Jamal Williams backing him up. And Jamal Williams is a really good running back, too, who can kind of do it all. He's just not an elite athlete, but he's, he's a pretty good running back. And I would want him on my team. And then the Eagles, wow, trading for A.J. Brown, that that really was very, very exciting to see. Um, I was surprised that the Titans didn't keep him around, uh, but I guess they didn't want to pay him that much money, maybe. That is an interesting decision nonetheless, but I think um, for the Eagles now to have A.J. Brown next to Devonta Smith, who we know is good, um, and then you also have Dallas Goddard, uh, yeah, that that should be a pretty good, a pretty good offense with Jalen Hurts. You know they're gonna be able to run the ball. You know they're gonna be able to get the ball to these receivers. Jalen Hurts is pretty good in the RPO games, um, play action, even traditional play action. He's pretty good. Um, and then AJ Brown working off that play action is gonna be. He's gonna be really good, just like he was in Tennessee. But. Um, in Tennessee, they did not have a Devontae Smith. So, yeah, I think it's entirely possible to expect A.J. Brown to get more one-on-one -on -one coverage while playing with the Eagles than he did with Tennessee. Um, I don't expect him to get quite as many targets, but he's probably going to have more yards per catch, which is crazy because he had a pretty high yards per catch while playing with the Titans. But I think uh, I think with the Eagles, it might be a little higher because Devontae Smith is going to want run more of the underneath stuff because even for the Titans on like a third and five, there weren't many guys you could expect them to get the ball to other than A.J. Brown. And yeah, for this game, uh, I really do want the Lions to win. And I am pretty optimistic about them, but I don't think this is a game they would win. I probably would actually bet on the Eagles to cover uh, to win by more than four points. But I probably would also bet the under on 48 and a half. This seems like a lot. I see this game probably being something like 17-24, to 24, not a super high-scoring game. And the Eagles probably winning. Yeah, so then we have Patriots at Dolphins. Uh, I'm definitely taking the Patriots to cover in this game. I actually think they will win, but I would probably just bet on them to cover. Uh, this will be a very good test to see what it looks like putting an elite wide receiver into an offense that already had some weapons, just like the Eagles. But we already know, you know, Tyreek Hill is an insanely good wide receiver. And, yeah, to put him on a team next to Jalen Waddell is going to be really interesting because they're both kind of a speed slot kind of wide receiver who also can play on the outside, can kind of do it all. Tyreek Hill is the better player who has been doing it for longer, but they are similarly talented, I guess, in ways. And yeah, it should be a ton of fun to watch this team. Uh, they got tons of speed. They also have Raheem Mostert on offense, uh, who's one of the faster running backs in the NFL. But yeah, I would bet against the Dolphins in this game. And I mean, it is the Patriots. I expect them to win more games than they're supposed to. And this would be one of those games. It looked like Mac Jones last year was reading defenses at a really high level. Um, and I would expect that to continue. Yeah, and the Patriots are definitely a team that has, I think, enough wide receivers. And they also draft Tyquan Thornton, who probably is going to have some kind of role. It will be interesting to see exactly what that is. But I do like Kendrick Bourne, who's a pretty good receiver. They also have Jacoby Myers, I, Nelson Aguilar. I mean, that's those are some pretty good wide receivers. They got a couple tight ends who can catch the ball. And they got good running backs. Um, this is a team that's really built to win any kind of game uh, they really just want to craft the right offense for mac jones and um i think they could be pretty good very soon obviously they made the playoffs last year and i would expect them to probably make the playoffs again uh, mac jones looks legit to me 
I definitely would not agree with people that say Mac Jones doesn't have an immense upside. I think I think in terms of reading defenses, he's going to be one of the best in the NFL. Um, and he's really showed a lot of that last year. So I would expect him to be a top 10 quarterback sooner than later. Um, and I definitely, I, de- I definitely think they'll make the playoffs again. And yeah, for this game, they have uh, Kendrick Bourne plus 320 on DraftKings to score a touchdown. I think that's pretty solid. I think that's pretty solid. He's probably going to be either wide receiver one or wide receiver two, depending on how they use Devontae Parker and Jacoby Myers. But Jacoby Myers never really gets targeted in the red zone for some reason. So Kendrick Bourne, I would expect to maybe get a couple red zone targets. And that seems like some pretty good odds to me. And then we have Ravens at Jets. We got the Ravens favored by seven points. I definitely would bet on the Ravens to cover that. Uh, To this point, the Jets don't really look like an organized NFL team on offense, especially. Um, At times, their defense has shown flashes, but really, they don't look like a good NFL team yet. And until they do, I would not bet on them to beat a team like the Ravens, who are definitely a team looking to make it to the playoffs and make another push at a Super Bowl hopefully um this is a team that really should have been really good last year and they just got so many injuries I mean so many key positions defensive back quarterback literally every running back on their freaking roster um it was really tough to watch as an NFL fan but yeah, I definitely would bet on the Ravens this year to certainly make the playoffs and probably win their division. Yeah, so in my opinion, this game is not going to be close. The Ravens are going to blow the Jets off of the field. Um, they probably will win by 15. And yeah, on DraftKings, they have Mike Davis at plus 135 to score a touchdown. I'm pretty sure Mike Davis is going to get something like 15 to 20 carries this game. And yeah, this just seems like a smart bet to me. He's going to be their kind of early down back, goal line back, kind of like that Mark Ingram, Latavius Murray role. He's going to be he's going to be the running back getting the most carries, um, and he's going to have a couple chances probably at a touchdown on the goal line. So I definitely think that's a smart bet at plus one thirty five. And yeah, the Ravens also are a team that drafted some players that I really liked. Uh, Kyle Hamilton definitely looks like. He definitely looks like he's fit. He's going to be a fit in this defense. I don't really know if he's going to be like a linebacker or a safety for them, but I don't think it really matters. You know, the Ravens are a team that can just kind of create a position out of nowhere um, and have him play that. And I would really trust that coaching staff to put him in the right position every play. Um, I think for other teams, maybe that wouldn't feel the same way, but the fact that he went to the Ravens is incredible. And I would fully expect him to be a very good player for a long time. And then the Jets, you know, they drafted Garrett Wilson, who looks like a really good receiver. Um, but I feel like uh, back Braxton Berrios is probably going to outsnap him for some reason. Um, and Braxton Berrios is probably going to probably going to be the starting receiver um, next to uh, Elijah Moore this game. So. We'll have to see how that goes throughout the season. Hopefully, uh, Garrett Wilson can get on the field. But Braxton Barrios is a good player. And, yeah, hopefully Zach Wilson can get back in the field soon enough with that knee injury. Uh, But I guess we'll just have to see. Um, But I will say, you know, when he has been on the field, he's not been great. Um, You know, it's hard to expect a quarterback to come in the NFL and just be the guy right away. But there are guys that have done it, and he's not one of them, you know. So if he isn't showing really much by the end of this year and the Jets have a high pick, I would think I would think they probably draft another quarterback. Um, that would be the smart thing to do, and I think the Jets are probably a smarter organization with this new regime. Then we have the Jaguars playing at Washington Commanders. Uh, this is a game I definitely expect to be pretty low scoring. I think that over under a 44 seems super high. I would probably put it at like 25. You know, I know both of these teams kind of have weapons and stuff, but we've not really seen a ton of consistent offense from either of these teams in a while. I know the commanders just got a new quarterback in Carson Wentz, but Carson Wentz is a guy who sometimes 
will give you a very good performance, and some guy sometimes he will look like the worst quarterback in the NFL. Um, so I don't think it'll be much different than Ryan Fitzpatrick, honestly, um, or um, Taylor Heineke. Um, I don't really see them as much of a difference. You know, Wentz can make some throws that those other guys can't make, but I think Wentz will also swallow the ball backwards sometimes where, you know, that that's just what he does. So, yeah, Washington is basically just going to live and die by Carson Wentz. Either he's going to be throwing touchdowns or interceptions. Um, so we'll have to see what it looks like this game. But I definitely would bet on the under. 44 points is a lot. And, yeah, the Jaguars I wouldn't really expect much consistent offense on their side either. I do like Trevor Lawrence. It does look like he is starting to put it together, and he's making some high-level throws. He did a few last year. Um but, you know, hopefully this year he can be a little more consistent on those plays um, and have, you know, just a better offense built around him with the coaching staff and all that. I think it's very possible they're a solid team this year, but I still wouldn't bet on it. Um, and, yeah, I definitely think the under would be the bet if you were going to bet on this game. Um, it would be really fun to see Travis Etienne finally play in a regular season game this year. And um, it will also be interesting to see some of the players for the Commanders. I like Jahan Dotson a lot. Yeah, it should be a fun game to watch. I'll definitely be tuning in. Uh, but I don't think there will be a ton of like consistent offense in this game. And there probably will be some turnovers. All right, so then we have the Browns and Panthers. Panthers playing at home here. I think I would definitely pick the Panthers in this game. Probably to win by more than two and a half. I think... Uh, Baker Mayfield is going to light the Browns on fire. And he's probably going to flip the bird a couple times towards the sideline. But he's probably going to throw for around 300 yards and at least a couple touchdowns, I expect. In a game like this, uh, he's definitely one of those guys who plays well with the chip on his shoulder. And he definitely has probably the largest chip he's had in a while. Uh, Baker Mayfield is a pretty good quarterback. He has shown the ability to be a very high-level passer when healthy. And it looks like he's healthy right now. Uh, the Panthers do have some weapons for him to throw to. They don't have the best offensive line, but it's not its not the worst in the NFL, probably. It's probably better than the Bears, at least. And yeah, I think with Baker Mayfield being able to get rid of the ball quickly, he has a nice quick release. Um, he's a fast processor. Uh, he can move around the pocket as well. He is a pretty good quarterback, and I think... I think uh, I think on this roster he could win more games than expected. I actually would probably bet on the Panthers to win the playoffs and possibly be the second team in that division. Um, really, just you're not going to beat the Buccaneers in a division like that, I don't think. But uh, they definitely will probably win around nine or ten games, I think, for the Panthers. And yeah, I mean the Browns with Jacoby Brissett, they're pretty much probably just going to run the ball a ton. Um, and then throw the ball when they have to. Jacoby Brissett isn't going to be able to push the ball downfield a ton. You know, he can move around a little bit. He will he will play tough, you know, probably run a couple guys over. He's a fun quarterback to watch, but um, he's not the best quarterback in the NFL, certainly. Probably, he's probably one of the better backup quarterbacks. You know, he is a guy who can win a game. Uh, but I think the Panthers should be favored in this game by more than two and a half points. And I think... Uh, for some reason, the market is not agreeing with me. For some reason, uh, Vegas doesn't like Baker Mayfield that much, I guess. I definitely would bet on Baker this game. All right, so then we have the Colts at Texans. Colts favored by seven points. Uh, I would take the Texans to cover in this game, but I still think the Colts will probably win. The Colts are a pretty good team with a good defense um, and a pretty good, uh, pretty good group of weapons on offense. And uh, with a theoretical upgrade at quarterback, uh, they should definitely make the playoffs this year. Um, and I do expect them to win this game, but the Texans, I think, will be a little better than last year. There were some games where you saw some pretty high-level stuff from Davis Mills um, and some games where you didn't see as much. But when I was watching him, it looked like when there were plays to be had, he was making them for the most part. Um, and they really only had like one great receiver to throw to. Yeah, so I definitely expect uh, Davis Mills to be just a little bit better than last year. And the Texans to be a better team. Uh, they also drafted some pretty good players like Derek Stingley. 
Um, and I think they could be, they definitely be, should be a better team than last year. Not, I don't think they'll be t- picking in the top five. And yeah, it also would be pretty fun to watch Derek Stingley play in this game. Um, to see him play in the NFL. It felt like he should have been playing in the NFL. Like the second you've seen him in college, he was like the best corner I've seen in a while. So yeah, this should be a fun game to watch. The Texans also drafted one of my favorite running backs, Damian Pierce. Um, who I couldn't get in fantasy, who went the the pick before I was going to get him in like the eighth round or something. But yeah, looking at this game, there's a prop bet I kind of like. Mo Ali Cox, plus 185 to be an anytime scorer. Matt Ryan is a guy who likes to throw to the tight end, and Mo Ali Cox has been pretty good for the last couple years, kind of un- underutilized at times. But when he was with Carson Wentz, you did see some good target share in that offense, and I expect that to continue with Matt Ryan to throw the ball to his tight ends. And, uh, yeah, Mo Ali Cox is probably the guy that will get some opportunities in the red zone. I would definitely probably do that one. Now you have the Giants at Titans. I definitely would bet on the Titans this game to win by more than 5.5. And, um, and I probably would bet the over as well. 43.5 doesn't seem quite right. You know, you'll have a healthy Derrick Henry is definitely definitely going to do some good stuff in this game definitely probably going to have 150 yards or something crazy um and i don't expect daniel jones to do much better than last year he looks like probably something like the 27th best quarterback in the nfl and yeah i definitely think daniel jones will come up short versus a better coach team in the titans here and i also think the titans are a pretty good roster um and yeah They did lose A.J. Brown, but getting Robert Woods in his replacement is something. You know, he's not going to be quite as good as A.J. Brown, but Robert Woods is a very good receiver. I would put him probably in the top 20 receivers in the NFL, especially in an offense like this where he's going to be running a lot of deep routes um, off play action. He can do that pretty well, better than most in the NFL. He still has really good speed. So, yeah, I think Robert Woods is actually a very good fit in this offense. They just need somebody else to work the intermediate parts of the field. That's where you would really hope Traylon Burks, the rookie, could come in and give you something working over the middle of the field. And, yeah, even with that, I would still expect the Titans to probably win by more than five and a half points. This game will probably not be that close. I would say Titans probably win by ten or so. Then we have the Packers at Vikings. This should be a pretty close game, one and a half points favored to Green Bay. Uh, this should be a really fun game because you got the Vikings unveiling a new offense that's supposed to be something like the Rams. People are saying Justin Jefferson's going to be doing a lot of Cooper Cup stuff. We'll have to see if he can block as well as Cooper Cup. Probably not, but I guess we'll have to see. I don't know if he's really been put in that position yet as a kind of wing slot tight end hybrid. But Justin Jefferson definitely has a lot of run after catch ability. And he also has the ability to work deep down the sideline and uh, basically get open versus anybody in the NFL. And yeah, Justin Jefferson is one of those guys I am very high on. I mean, obviously a lot of people are, but I think he's probably I think he's probably the best receiver in the NFL. Devontae Adams is certainly up there. But uh, I do think if you put Justin Jefferson with Aaron Rodgers, I think you would get better results than Devontae Adams. I would just say that. I think Justin Jefferson has some of the best releases in the NFL. He's one of the better route runners. He's got insane speed. He's got good ball tracking ability. Great after the catch. Um, really the whole package with Justin Jefferson. You don't um, you don't really have any part of his game you can criticize. He's, he's the perfect wide receiver. And yeah, maybe if the Vikings are in a little more pass-happy offense, it could be interesting to see what Kirk Cousins looks like in an offense like that. um, You might be able to expect some high level of play because he is a guy who could definitely work the intermediate parts of the field in the short areas better than most quarterbacks. He definitely reads the field at a very high level. And I think the more outlets you give a quarterback like Kirk Cousins, the better you're going to see him play because he's not really a guy who can run very much. Um, so I think this is the type of offense that definitely probably fits his skill set a little bit more than what they were doing last year. And yeah, maybe with an offense like this, you might see Kirk Cousins be somewhere in the top six quarterbacks in the NFL. And that sounds crazy for a guy who's really not athletic. 
Um, well, not that athletic. Kirk Cousins can kind of take off. I mean, yeah, I think he had like a 30-yard run last year, which is very surprising. I mean, he's not fast, but he's not slow. He is a guy that he can get yards that are there, I guess. It's kind of weird. He doesn't do it very much, but he can run a little bit. He just doesn't probably like taking hits. This is a game that's pretty hard to pick. I guess I would probably just take the Packers. Um, but if I was going to bet, I would probably do the under. 47 points seems like quite a bit to me. And yeah, I think 47 points seems like a lot to me when you, the Packers have two really good running backs with uh, A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. I expect the Packers to probably throw the ball a lot to Aaron Jones like they did last year when Devontae Adams went down. So I honestly think Aaron Jones might relieve this team in receiving Maybe receptions, probably not receiving yards, but it's possible. Yeah, so I would expect the Packers to get creative, especially around the red zone with that kind of stuff. Um, and I do think the Packers will win this game. Uh, and I probably would bet the, oh, them to win by more than one and a half, but I think the smarter bet is probably still the under. All right, so then we got Chiefs at Cardinals. Uh, I'm definitely taking the Chiefs to cover this game. I do not think the Cardinals are that good of a football team. Um... I would not bet the over in this game. 53 is a lot of points, especially for the Chiefs getting some new receivers in there. It will be interesting to see what the Chiefs are going to do on offense. Um, but I think as long as Travis Kelsey can stay healthy, they will be a very good offense, scoring a lot of points. You still got guys like Mikael Harmon, who runs like a 4-3, um, and can catch the ball. He can't do much else other than run fast and catch the ball, but you know, occasionally they might hand the ball off to him, and he... He has like a 50-yard run or something crazy. Yeah, so I do expect the Chiefs to probably keep scoring points and look pretty good while doing it. Uh, as far as the Cardinals, um, I do like Kyler Murray. I will say that. I think he is a franchise quarterback. He is one of the more talented quarterbacks in the NFL. If I was going on talent alone, he's probably in the top four. Yeah, certainly I would have like Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, Herbert, and Kyler Murray's like right around there, probably five, maybe six. He certainly is up there for me um, in terms of an elite quarterback prospect, you know. Um, honestly, in the open field, he's one of the better runners in the NFL, independent of position. Um, he just makes guys miss and makes it look easy. Uh, there's so many times when you got a guy running to the sideline and you think he's got the angle, and Kyler Murray just just makes it look easy. I don't know how he does it. But, yeah, the real problem with the Cardinals, I believe, is the offensive coordinator. I think they have done a pretty bad job of building roster as well. Um, and, yeah, it looks like without uh, DeAndre Hopkins, it's going to be pretty tough for them probably to move the ball. And I would expect them to probably not make the playoffs this year and probably fire everybody. And hopefully Kyler Murray gets to stay. And yeah, I guess whatever, whoever the next hot head coach candidate is, they're going to get to probably, probably get to coach for Kyler Murray. So that could be interesting. And yeah, I'm kind of already looking ahead to next year when Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury is gone and they have somebody new calling plays on offense because I have been kind of out on Cliff Kingsbury for like about a year and a half, honestly. It was like kind of cool at first. They were do they are doing some interesting things at the line of scrim scrimmage from like a run game perspective, but as far as the pass game goes, it's very vanilla, um, and it's not that hard to stop schematically. Um, the only time it really works is when Kyler Murray runs around and makes plays. But I don't think you can give Cliff Kingsbury any credit for Kyler Murray running around and making plays that only Kyler Murray can make. Um, in my opinion, Cliff Kingsbury should be gone already, but um, I guess we'll have to see if he even makes it to the end of the season. All right, so then we got the Raiders at Chargers. This should be a fun game. Uh, I think <clears throat> this one's going to be really hard for me. I think I'll bet on the Raiders this one. So at least cover the three points, but I think they'll win the game. 52 points seems kind of low as well. Both of these offenses have lots of weapons. Should be a should be a high scoring game this might be like the game of the week probably 
yeah, I would say this is probably the game I'm going to probably want to watch the most. There are some really good matchups this week, though. I definitely think watching the Raiders with Devontae Adams will be a lot of fun, and I think there will be a little bit better of a team than last year, but I think on the f- field it would actually make things a lot easier on Derek Carr. Now that he has a legit wide receiver one who can get open on almost any play, um, you also have Darren Waller, who's basically like a insanely talented tight end. You know, hopefully they pay him and he stays. And yeah, the Raiders will also be another team where you look at adding an elite wide receiver to see what kind of effect it has on the offense. I do think the Raiders will have the best returns from adding an elite wide receiver. You know, you do have uh, the Eagles adding A.J. Brown and then um, Tyreek Hill going to the Dolphins. So I think the Raiders will probably see the best returns for that because I think they have the best quarterback. Now, I think adding an elite wide receiver will improve any offense, but if you have an elite quarterback, I think it just opens more areas of the field. Um, and I think that is the case with the Raiders. They should be they should be a legit playoff team this year. Um, and they probably, I think they're going to be the second best team in this division. Um, and I would bet the over on them probably this year as well. And yeah, this is going to be a really tight division because the Chargers are really good. They got an elite quarterback. I honestly think all four teams in this division kind of have a quarterback that I think is either elite or fringe elite or kind of on the cusp of becoming elite. Like, I mean, Justin Herbert is like one of the more talented quarterbacks in the NFL, and he also has shown uh, to play quarterback at a very high level. And then you got Derek Carr, who's kind of a little older, but he's also... I mean, he's also played quarterback at a high level, and then you give him an elite receiver, it just, you know, it's going to make it go up just a little bit higher probably. And then we've all seen what Russell Wilson can do, throwing the ball deep. He's got a hell of a lot of receivers to throw to, so AFC West is just going to be insane this year. I know everyone's saying that, but I'm ready for it to finally be here and to finally be watching it this weekend. It's going to be so much fun. And then we have the Buccaneers at Cowboys. I'm definitely taking the Buccaneers to cover in this game. I don't think it would be that close. Dak Prescott is pretty good. But, um, you know, without Tyron Smith, you know, they are bringing in. uh, I think they're bringing. Yeah, they just signed Jason Peters like the other day. Yeah, the left tackle might be a rookie who they were training to play guard. Uh, That could be interesting. Yeah. Either way, the Cowboys probably aren't going to have this elite offensive line this year. Um, Losing Amari Cooper will have a pretty big impact on this offense overall. Amari Cooper was the number one receiver in this NFL. And, you know, CeeDee Lamb, in theory, has everything it takes to be that guy. But uh, Amari Cooper was that guy last year. um, And I think him leaving is going to have an effect on this offense. So we'll just have to see if CeeDee Lamb can do that this year and be that guy. Um, but it might not it might not happen right away. You know, the Buccaneers the Buccaneers got a great roster. Seems like Tom Brady, wherever he goes, they have great coaching no matter what. So we'll have to see without Bruce Arians if they're still a really good well coached team, especially. You know, but they still got Todd Bowles and all that, so it should be it should still be pretty good, especially on defense. And then Brady is basically the offensive coordinator, so we'll have to see. But I do expect them to still be very good and very well coached. They have a loaded roster. You've heard it all. Adding Julio Jones and Russell Cage basically makes this wide receiver core kind of bulletproof because you have, like, two guys who are kind of elite receivers and Godwin and Mike Evans, and then you have a bunch of other guys who can also play at a very high level, I think. Um, So, yeah, I'm definitely expecting the Buccaneers to be very good this year. Probably probably make it to the Super Bowl I feel like I feel like they have a really good roster so it should be interesting but um if I had to pick a team for the Super Bowl the Buccaneers would probably make it this year then we have the Broncos playing at Seattle this will be interesting to see Russell Wilson play versus the Seahawks I'm sure the crowd will be loud as hell but uh yeah I'm pretty sure Broncos are gonna win and yeah with uh Geno Smith starting at quarterback. The Seahawks probably won't be that great. Though I am kind of a fan of Geno Smith. Uh, there were a couple games when he was playing for the Jets, I thought. He showed he showed some high-level stuff, even if the numbers might have not backed that up. I definitely seen stretches of play where he looked like 
a starting caliber quarterback, at least in the NFL. And I thought with a little more support around him, maybe some better receivers to throw to, he might have been a little better for the Jets. So I am happy to see him get this opportunity to play again uh, and be a starting quarterback in the NFL. Uh, And, you know, hopefully he gets to hang on to it. We'll see what happens. Um, But it might be a kind of revolving door kind of quarterback situation here for the Seahawks this year. And the Seahawks are probably going to be a favorite to be a top five pick in the NFL draft next year. And yeah, losing Bobby Wagner on this defense also also won't be great. So um, yeah, I don't expect the Seahawks to be that good, but I also don't think they'll be like the worst team in the NFL or anything. Um, but yeah, the Broncos definitely, I would pick to probably cover the six and a half this game. I don't think it would be that close. Probably win this game by more than 10 points. So yeah, that's pretty much it for week one predictions. Uh, thanks for watching.